Okay, so I've just arrived here at the Artificial Intelligence Conference that is taking place in the Kenyan capital, Nairobi. And part of this conference is looking at how artificial intelligence can be utilized by drone technology. I can hear a speaker up at the podium. There is an area where speakers are making presentations, as well as an area where there are exhibition stalls and different companies are displaying their wares. I can see some drones on display here and uh, i think i'll go and have a look and also speak to some of the speakers welcome back to africa science focus a weekly science and development show from SciDevNet. i am ogichi kianyao we just heard from our reporter michael kaluki who attended the Artificial Intelligence Conference that held in the last week of March in Nairobi, Kenya. He learned from African professionals in the technology and artificial intelligence sector about how artificial intelligence can be integrated with drones and data analytics, as well as what effects these technologies will have on Africa's future. Michael spoke to Dennis Mutua, Managing Director of Geocart, a company using drones for innovative solutions, about the potential of artificial intelligence and drones in different sectors. Right, so I've been walking around the exhibition area and I've come across an exhibition stand here that reads Geocart. Um, there's a gentleman who's standing here, perhaps I can speak to him. Hello sir, how are you? Uh, I'm good, thank you. Now I see a number of drones sitting on the table here or lying on the table here at your exhibition stand. Um, you know, primarily... What are drones used for on the continent? Okay, um, thank you. There are quite a number of uh, applications. Uh, honestly speaking, they are so many because, of course, we have applications in different uh, industries. We have applications in the agriculture where, say, for example, you want to do precision farming, you can use, a, a, say, like a multispectral sensor to collect data about maybe crops or maybe soil characteristics and this data can be used to you know make decisions you know and assist farmers to uh, you know better uh, their productions uh, we also have uh, applications in engineering whereby you know you can have uh, these lidar you know sensors on drones and uh, from the data sets that you are able to get maybe point clouds and things like that you can more Model uh, like you know things like infrastructure to assist in the coming up with designs you know and this is something that is mostly being used by uh, geospatial engineers and uh, you know um, uh, civil engineers and architects. So um, maybe another industry where they are being uh, used in is uh, in things like uh, surveillance, uh, whereby you know thermal sensors are you know coming out quite strongly in uh, uh, providing surveillance and things like that. Also in inspections, you know, inspecting of things like uh, either large towers whose access is a you know a challenge. Drones are you know able to reach to these those positions and you know collect data that can be used to either provide insight on uh, things like management and stuff like that, yeah. Now, this conference is partially exploring how artificial intelligence can be utilized by drone technology. In what ways do you think artificial intelligence can be utilized by drones? Uh, I consider drones themselves currently because uh, the entire concept of drones is actually artificial intelligence driven uh, because uh, drones have already uh, sort of uh, embraced uh, artificial intelligence when you look at uh, their operations and uh, now this kind of data sets that you know you are collecting there is a lot of brilliance that goes into uh, you know uh, this uh, in, in the operations whereby we are saying uh, say for example uh, for geospatial applications where you want to collect some data sets for uh, a given area, uh, what you would do is normally we just uh, create some directions, you know, flight height, uh, you know, uh, if it is a photography that is going to happen, you know, you input things like overlaps and stuff like that. And for one hour, the drone is out there 
collecting data. So that is artificial intelligence because when that drone is out there, if it meets an obstacle, it sort of knows how it is supposed to behave. Is it supposed to go up or low or you know how to avoid it? So artificial intelligence it's is at the core of drones themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I saw that one of your drones is turned on. I was just wondering if perhaps um, it has an interesting sound to it, uh, just to say. I mean, when these are flying around a farm, so it sounds like a little buzz. Yeah. Um, one might almost mistake it for, you know, a, a, a swarm of bees does does it get people <laughs> up on the farms you know when you are using them in areas where there are farms you know sometimes people think oh there's a swarm of bees coming along it's a very interesting question actually because uh, actually in Tanzania drones are referred to as uh, negenyuki ah that's in uh, that's Swahili <laughs> and if I direct yes. translation means uh, birds bees Bees, yeah, yeah, buzzing bees, bees or yeah. birds bees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, of course, uh, there is a issue of uh, the noise that is produced by the propellers as, you know, they go round and round. And uh, that is what is responsible to that whirling, you know, buzzing sound that we get to hear. Uh, of course, uh, it doesn't have any direct impact unless you are uh, mapping an area where uh, there are either, say, uh, either animals that would be inter- you know, interrupted by that or their programs, say, for example, uh, it's an animal farm and uh, they would be maybe affected by that. But in on- most, most of the times you find that where you are providing or you're trying to collect this data, it's in coffee or tea farms. And uh, in essence, there is no effect at all. Maybe just people getting curious at what is happening and stuff, yeah. Dennis highlighted the potential of artificial intelligence and drones in agriculture, engineering, human resource management, and other fields. Michael also spoke with Bright Mawudo, regional lead at Crystal Intelligence, a blockchain firm, who explained how artificial intelligence and blockchain can work to shape the future of African businesses. Right, so I've just met up with one of the speakers here at the conference. Right, what do you think is the importance of AI, artificial intelligence, for the continent? Um, artificial intelligence right now, a lot of people have been uh, looking at it from a bad perspective, thinking that it's going to be have a negative impact on their jobs and everything. But there's so many benefits for, for AI to be implemented into the, the space where We can see AI to be able to help us automate a lot of processes. Mundane tasks that we've been doing can now be automated. We can actually use AI to be able to have predictive analysis of uh, determining how our business will be in the near future. For example, if you take somebody who sells particular kind of goods and services, you can use AI to be able to actually predict what will happen in the near future um, and be able to see how to make sure you can have better return on investment. So there are various many ways to be able to make sure that we get um, to know, get the best out of it. Um, and in the continent, we have a lot of data. We have too much data that we don't get to use. We need to be able to use AI to be able to make sure that data makes sense for us to be able to have informed decision making. Now, this conference is partially exploring how AI can be utilized by drone technology. In what ways do you think AI can be utilized by drones on the continent? And what significance or impact would this have for the future of Africa? If you look at drone drone being used in the the continent, a lot of people use it for fun to make sure they can actually take, you know, pictures and videos. But also, this can be be used for intelligence. Drones can be able to actually take pictures of places um, or even in a battle, they can actually be able to see, um, to to make... um, make some sort of information about a particular terrain or see there are human beings or people hiding in bushes or particular places, right? Or even to do surveillance, right? Drone can be used. Now, the AI tools can be able to actually let you know um, to bring out information about the place, how it used to be like, um, what information you should be able to pick up, and again, to make informed decisions. Another way also is, for example, imagine a soldier on a battlefield and have a drone above him who's able to see ahead of him, right? And they have some sort of communication back to their device. As they're moving, they're able to actually make sense to know if the enemy on the other side is 
they are people or he's an enemy or is actually uh, somebody who they're supposed to, add, uh, uh, to work with, right? Or an innocent person. AI tools can be used to actually separate all of those for them to know how they're going to move forward um, to, have a, to have success in their, in their missions. Now, it's also used in other fields, like drones are, drone technology is also used in other sectors, mm-hmm. such as agriculture. Yes. Could you, what it is. Okay, yeah. Could you tell me a bit more on that? Yes. So, uh, drones can also be used in agriculture, and all of them combined with other AI tools can be able to help to know how um, a particular, for, for, for the kind of crops you're planting, uh, to know how the, um, how do you call it? To pick up data about soil precipitation, uh, we're looking at uh, carbon credits, also be able to pick information about the areas, and it also just to do surveillance and do map out certain areas, right? Some people don't even know how much land they have or which land is getting, it needs to be, uh, needs fertilizer or proper kind of treatment, right, for the kind of crops they're going to grow. So those drones can actually fetch all of that information. And all of that information fed into AI can actually tell you, for the past 10 years, this area has been having, but this kind of pictures that I've been taking can tell you this, the pattern that has been going through for a number of time. And this is how you should actually plan for the near future. If you look at, for example, um, Del Monte, Del Monte in Kenya, right? The Del Monte in Kenya has acres of land. If you look at the way um, that they have many um, different kind of lands for different kind of, pl- of pineapple that they plant, a drone technology being able to map out the entire area can let them know the rotation of soil and the rotation of kind of, uh, pl- uh, how do you call it, a pineapple that's supposed to plant in the entire area. That's a practical use case. Um, so yeah, so for geospatial kind of uh, work can be done with drone technology and combine that data that they've collected into, into AR technology so many models that are there will be able to help people to make informed decisions. What role, if any, do you think governments here in East Africa and in West Africa and other parts of the continent have in advancing the merging of technologies such as AI and drone technology? Yeah. I believe the governments need to be able to have, give a lot of support. Um, currently, without sharing of information or data, we will not be able to actually make sense of the kind of richness that we have in this continent. Africa is rich in minerals. Africa is rich in, uh, in vegetation, in agriculture, a lot of natural resources that we have. With drone technology being able to be used in the right way, we should be able to have enough better information of each country and know how to be able to, ha- uh, even for trade, in, 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 in terms of trade um, of, of goods and services, we should be able to actually share that data, make, again, better data, better decision-making for be able to share information with each other, from each other, um, uh, ahead of time. So also gets to um, contribute to the, the economic development of the country, employment will be created, um, the GDP of the country will, will be able to go high as well. And all of this information is there if we just collect the right data. And we have AI tools right now which can be able to take all of that data, all of, the, all of that collected to be able to make sure they can bring out um, the future of implementations of things. And my last question, the cost of technology is seen as challenging for many on the continent. What can be done in this regard to enable access to technology for majority of the population on the continent? A farmer in Ghana or in Kenya or Malawi or Zimbabwe doesn't necessarily have to buy that, day, that uh, drone, right? Drones are expensive and you need a particular kind of drone to be able to get a particular information. What if this data is being done, for example, the government or institutions that collaborate to be able to help farmers? All of that data can be made open source. That open source data being given to them for them to be able to work. And a lot of more, um, how do you call it, communities or startups or organizations can pick that information and be able to actually manipulate it and work with it in a way that it will be able to serve their various communities. So you find um, a, 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 an organization could be in a rural area trying to help farmers to grow their, um, how the crops better, right? But they lack information. If this information is made public and open source uh, data, they will be able to pick that data, develop models to be able to say, okay, now that the data of other areas is looking like this, we can now make a decision on how we're going to make, uh, how to plant crops in our area. So we have to make sure that the data is open source. How can African leaders tap into the benefits this technology and innovations can offer? Moses Kemibaro, founder of Say Africa, a digital marketing agency, spoke about how important it is for African businesses to embrace artificial intelligence 
Jones and Data Analytics. Right, so I've met another of the speakers here at the conference. Moses, how can artificial intelligence be used to advance the continent ahead? So I want to take a bit of a history trip here because uh, my career essentially started back in 1995 uh, when I first started playing around with the internet. And as you can imagine, this is almost 30 years ago. We saw the internet arrive in Africa at a time when you know fax machines were uh, de facto. Um, and from that moment in time, basically we've seen this 30-year progression to where pretty much the internet underpins and did everything that we do in the, in the continent, but also here in Kenya where, for instance, we do things like our taxes and so forth using the internet. So for me, the moment that really changed everything when I think about generative AI was when ChatGPT came out in November 2022, and within a span of two months rose to the point that it had 100 million users and more today. And for me, that was kind of like a watershed moment in terms of determining or rather illustrating the impact and the potential of generative AI. The third thing... What is generative AI, if you could ask? Yeah, generative AI is a little bit different from the AIs that were there before, meaning that you're able to go into a system, ask it a question or give it a prompt, and it gives you a very specific and quite detailed response. And that is basically what ChatGPT does. We put in a prompt and it gives us a very elaborate and detailed response to what we need. Um, Now, when you look at the paradigm of generative AI, it's everything from images to text prompting to even now videos using a platform called Sora, which is also innovated by OpenAI and, of course, many, many other things. But the interesting thing about generative AI, and this is really important, is that last year uh, a statement was made by Jensen Wang, who was the CEO of the company called NVIDIA. And NVIDIA happens to make the processors or the chips that actually run most of the uh, AI platforms. It underpins actually the infrastructure that is generative AI. And he said that generative AI is going to be bigger than the Internet in itself. Now, if you can imagine that someone like myself, whose entire career, almost 30 years, has been on the internet, is now being told 30 years later that there's a bigger technology than the internet, for me, that is profound for Africa. I see an opportunity to shift the paradigm, to level the playing field. We are, of course, very far behind from North America and other markets where innovators are creating things on, on, on AI. But it also gives us an opportunity to probably reset and actually move forward in the way that we saw, for instance, mobile technology did for Africa. Now, if we can find a way of putting African content, African data sets and African insights onto our own African large language models and other foundation models that contain things that are inherently from our markets and our countries, we think that AI can be hugely transformative. And there's so many use cases because generative AI is a cross-cutting technology. Everybody's using it from things like, you know, medical diagnosis uh, all the way through to education, uh, to finding ways of improving manufacturing processes, uh, to create ways of people who don't speak their language being able to communicate in real time. Um, It can work in many, many instances. Uh, And generally speaking, I think it's probably the biggest opportunity that we are seeing in Africa since the Internet itself 30 years ago. What role, if any, do you think governments have in advancing merging of, merging of technologies such as AI and drone technology? Well, obviously, one of the things that is important in this area is regulation. And I think already in the conference, we had a lot of pain is happening locally in Kenya, where uh, many of the drone operators and companies in this drone space are saying that the licensing regime is a bit too uh, punitive, that it's difficult to operate the way it's currently being done. Um, You know, the need that um, even to use some of the most basic drones, you need to have very specific licensing, which sometimes is difficult to obtain. Um, We also see that when it comes to... Uh, you know, emerging technologies like AI, there was this new bill that they were proposing to pass. It had a lot of um, uh, inconsistent and potentially damaging areas in that uh, particular law. And this is Kenya. Yeah, this is Kenya specifically. Uh, but we definitely see across the continent that regulation is going to be key. We need to make sure that our, our, our laws and, uh, uh, you know, um, regulations around these areas are inclusive, that are cognizant of best practices globally, um, that take into consideration innovation, but at the same time within uh, sort of safety measures and you know, with the guardrails in place uh, so that, again, it just doesn't go out there and it's not done without any supervision. So finding that balance is going to be key. But my biggest concern at this point in time is that when you look at some of the initiatives happening, let's say, in Asia, in Europe, in North America, um, Africa is at a very, very big risk of falling behind in this AI race because if our regulations and our governments are not as proactive as they need to be, we potentially could be a casualty of AI itself. So not just in terms of regulatory capabilities, but even providing the enablers to sort of drive the adoption and put in the right policies and, and laws that are going to actually encourage 
uh, a flourishing of you know entrepreneurship for instance or even more importantly making sure that government itself is at the very forefront of adopting some of these technologies to streamline how they operate so ren we've seen in, in europe we've seen in north america in parts of asia very progressive very um inclusive laws and regulations that are actually driving um the growth and catalyzing the uptake of these technologies we need to see the same thing happening here in africa next michael spoke to nancy kinua head of geospatial engineering and data analytics at statspeak a data and software engineering company she tells us how she integrates artificial intelligence into her workflow. So I've been walking around the exhibition area here at the conference and I've come across another exhibition stand and it reads Start Speak. Yeah, there's a lady standing here. I think I'll get the chance to speak to her. Hello, how are you, madam? Hi, I'm good. How are you? Fine, thank you. What does Start Speak do? Uh, Statspeak is a data and software engineering company. So what we do is we work with organizations, we partner with them to help them get uh, the most out of their data, uh, starting from either collection of data or using what the data that you already have. And then we kind of uh, bring in analytics, whether it's uh, ex- advanced analytics or just simple analytics to be able to give you insights, whether it's through dashboards or through um, reports. So do you utilize artificial intelligence? Yes, we do. Um, a lot of people have asked me that question today, and uh, I was saying that AI, what we think of AI is large language models, but you don't understand AI has different levels to it, whether it's machine learning, deep learning, or stuff like that. And truly, we do use it because part of our analytics is like the machine learning part work that we do uh, in terms of our advanced analytics. So on a daily, we do use AI, even building chat ports. Like, for example, let's say the chat DB that we have, we can train it using your data in such a way that you only enter prompts to be able to understand the analytics behind your data. Instead of feeding your data, maybe private data on chat GPT, you feed it on chat DB, which we've already installed in your own organization. Um, just to ask you, what significance does artificial intelligence have to the continent? Um, let me reiterate uh, one of our directors, like he was one of the speakers, and he was saying AI like helps reduce a lot of tasks, not reduce, but reduce the amount of time taken to do a lot of tasks. So it's kind of a compressing tasks that could be called just daily chores and helps you to automate some of these tasks in a way that you can concentrate on more important tasks. So this daily in and out, a little bit of data analytics here and there, if you automate it, you're able to get your analytics in a faster way, in a more enhanced so that you can act faster. And then you can be able even to act on more pressing stuff that he said, more human tasks. Now, this conference is partially exploring how artificial intelligence can be utilized by drone technology. In what ways do you think artificial intelligence can be utilized by drones? Being in the data industry, we've gotten to work with some partners in the agriculture space. And part of what they want to understand is maybe how can I use uh, technology to improve either my yield or understand in an area like, let's say, a given county, what are we growing, how are the yields are. Uh, are changing over time. So um, how can AI be used? A lot of data that we acquire from drone data, sometimes we don't utilize it to the fullest. In terms of precision agriculture, these drones sometimes have sensors and these sensors collect a lot of information that can be fed either into models or can be analyzed in such a way that it can give you insights in terms of how are my crops performing, how is the health, what do I need to improve, whether it's to increase fertilizer, to water or to spray pests over certain regions of places. So I can say how can AI, it's this data be utilized in a way that we get as let me call it big data, like you're collecting a lot of data. How can this data be analyzed in such a way that it complements each other and we get more insights on your farms, on what you're planting, how your yields are performing over time? Yeah. And what significance would that have for farmers on the continent? Uh, the significance is that you get to understand your crops, uh, or your farming practices over time in a way that you know this is what I've been doing, it's working or it's not working. How can I improve on this in a faster way? And then also in terms of yield prediction, I can even be able to plan on my how do I sell this or how do I improve now in future in what I'm farming. Even in terms, sometimes even changing the crop that you're farming in your in your area. Sometimes you, you might be doing maize, but your area, the data that you've collected is saying you're more suitable for, for beans. So how can that, 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 that can be good for farmers? Adi Kimani 
sales and marketing lead at Fahari Aviation, a drone technology company, discusses ways to improve access to technology in rural and urban areas across Africa. Okay, so I've just been walking around the exhibition area of the conference and I've come across an exhibition stand and it reads Fahari Aviation. I'll just speak to the gentleman standing here. How are you, sir? I'm very well, thank you. Can you tell me a little bit about uh, Fahari Aviation? What we do, one, is we train people on becoming drone pilots. Two, we offer services using drone technology. And three, we are also a reseller of drones. Now, you have a display of drones here, I should say, of all sizes and colors yes. and uh, just looking at a small one here it looks like it's well um, about maybe 40 centimeters by 40 centimeters um, and also in height about maybe 15 centimeters then you have a larger one which is almost three times that then you have a larger one which looks like a small vehicle and it's sitting on the ground here. it's lying on the ground here huge huge machinery here okay could you tell me you know, a little bit about these drones and what they're used for. Yes. So these drones uh, have different purposes. Um, like the smaller drone that you saw, the, the white one, the 40 by 41 it, um, it's a P4M. It's a multispectral camera, camera drone used in agriculture, uh, used to do a crop health analysis. So it has five bands of uh, cameras uh, taking different uh, images. And once, uh, when you bind them together, they create an NDVI map. This NDVI map uh, gives you an idea of how your farm is doing and uh, areas where, they, where it needs more uh, inputs or has um, it, uh, deficiencies in certain nutrients or uh, the soil is not doing very well. So once you get this information, you feed it into the biggest drone that we have here. When applying fertilizer or chemicals, it does uh, a variable rate application. So areas where there's problems, it applies more, and areas where there's no much problems, it just applies a normal rate. So you end up uh, getting very uh, efficient application. You reduce costs and you get more, uh, like uh, this is what now, why it's called uh, precision agriculture. So it's very precise. You get fewer losses and more, more uh, yield. Now, the cost of technology is seen as challenging for many on the continent. What can be done in this regard to enable access to technology such as you have here, that is drones that utilize AI, the drone technology is an emerging technology in Africa, and uh, it's really g gaining traction uh, among farmers. Uh, for example, in Kenya, many farmers, especially the big farms, have uh, started using this uh, technology and have started seeing the benefits that uh, they get from using that, this kind of technology. Now, for, for small-scale farmers, um, one uh, thing that would really help them to tap into this technology is... Uh, one, the, we need to make a lot of sensitization because, uh, as always, many uh, any new technology gets, um, it's not usually very welcome at first. But once they start seeing the benefits, they start embracing it. So getting sensitize, making sensitization a priority to uh, educate the farmers on how this technology can benefit them is one of the ways that we can start. Then second also is uh, maybe having um, the organizations or cooperatives that have uh, these farmers are usually part of. So congregating them together and having them come uh, together as a group so that these services can be offered to them as a group. Maybe if there's an area that does, just does tea farming, so the small scale farmers can come together and uh, so that it makes it more cost effective when this drone technology is, is uh, used in their farms we can come and do a huge chunk of land belonging to different farmers, small-scale farmers, makes it very cost-effective for them. And at the end of the day, they end up getting returns on their yield and their investment. That's all for Mounted Africa Science Focus today. If you want to find out more, head to the SciDevNet website. That's www.scidev.net. Today's show was produced by Alice Hurst, with editing by Titi Lopefadare and Ogechi Kianyao and reporting by Michael Kaluki. I'm Ogechi Ekeanya, and until next time, it's goodbye.
Africa Science Focus is produced by SideofNet and distributed in association with your local radio station.